looks very nice. Mm-hmm. I like nice things. You earned it. I paid for it, Mr. Crichton. Yes, I am sure you did. Now, shall we discuss ways and means of earning more? The Foreign Office has briefed you on your next assignment. On the Dreicher? Correct. You're Emily Parkinson, fashion consultant. You're on your way to Rome to see the full collection of Italian styles. However, you're stopping off in Zurich for a week's holiday. Your compartment on the train has been arranged. I have your ticket, your passport, and traveler checks, hundred pound in fivers, and uh, this. Nail file? Something the boys in the laboratory created especially for you. Take off the jacket. Mm -hmm. Effective little piece. And this is something very special indeed. Instant death, the Americans might call it. A very lethal poison. One tablet could kill a man in 30 seconds. It's a ticklish assignment. Conrad Riker escaped on his own. No doubt that the motherland would like him back again. That must not happen, Hillary. I understand. You have a fair idea that the Americans have already located him. There's a rumor they set up a rendezvous. Where? That's for you to find out. But when that meeting is held, the British government must be represented. Offer Riker asylum here. Aren't the Americans offering the same thing? Why, of course. And so are the French. It's a three-sided cricket match, Hillary. However, in the last analysis, the choice will be Riker's. But we do want him here. Very well. Oh, uh, just one more thing. You'll be operating in neutral territory. Remember, the Swiss are our friends. Yes, sir. Well, good luck. Have a pleasant journey, Miss Parkinson. And do let us hear from you. As always. Poppin. How nice to hear from you, Hillary. Crichton just left my office. Did he tell you anything that could hurt our plans? No. I'm flying to Paris this afternoon to catch the Zurich train. There's an American on board who knows where Riker is located. We know about the American. His name is Gannon. Have you a file on him? Yes, Crichton gave it to me. Bird, study it. I'll listen carefully. We've arranged for a mix-up in your reservations. Going to be sharing the same compartment with him. Interesting. Be nice to him, Hillary. It could earn you another bracelet. Well, goodbye, dear. Have dinner early for me, will you? Yes, sir. May I help you? Bulldog number seven, please. Bulldog number seven. Might I have a match? Match. Certainly, sir. Good job. Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm sorry. I thought this was compartment D. Well, it is. Oh. After you. Thank you.
imagine you reserved a private compartment. Yes. As a matter of fact, I did. So did I. Apparently, the train is crowded. Apparently. Oh, if you like, I'll ask the conductor to find me something else. Oh, please don't bother, really. We'll cope. You are British. Yes. You're American. Thomas Baines is my name. How do you do, Mr. Baines? I am Emily Parkinson. Are you going all the way to Zurich, Miss Parkinson? Yes. Holiday? Yes. And you? Zurich, holiday. Well, here's to a pleasant trip for both of us, Mr. Baines. Certainly paints the picture. So does International Electronics Corporation. What an imposing title. Well, we sell imposing items like brains, electronic brains. Mm, remarkable. If only we had a machine that could tell us what kind of dress your wife would be likely to buy. I'm afraid we couldn't build that for you. You see, I have no wife now. Oh, so sorry. That's it. Oh, you love this. Do you travel for your firm a lot? Do you know my ambition in life? Tell me. That's fine. To sleep in the same bed for seven consecutive nights. Well, here's the beautiful women. May they never be replaced by machines. Will you forgive me, monsieur, mademoiselle? We are so crowded tonight. May this gentleman share your table? Of course. Thank okay. you. <laughs> merci, merci, merci. <laughs> oh, 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 mon Dieu! Forgive me. Quite oh, right. so right, please, please don't bother. Absolutely oh. no harm. My apologies, mademoiselle. Oh, oh. Well, that's last one, isn't it? I'm truly sorry, mademoiselle. I, I'm usually not so clumsy. I've been suffering from a nervous ailment. Maybe you should have a glass of wine. Bring another glass, will you, waiter? Si bien. <laughs> uh, forgive me, mademoiselle. Haven't I met you before? I don't think so. However, I travel quite a lot. Perhaps you... Uh, I, too, travel a great deal. Oh, permit me. My name is Maurice Duvaux. I am in the import-export business. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Baines. Uh, it's Miss Parkinson. So. How do you do? Are you starting off in Zurich? Uh, yes, oh, for a day or two, and then to Italy. And you, monsieur? Just a vacation. Oh, Switzerland is lovely this time of year. <laughs> and Mademoiselle? Uh, like Mr. Baines, I'm on holiday. <laughs> you, uh, you are English, Mademoiselle, and uh, Monsieur Baines is American. Yes, right. Yeah, and I'm French. Oh, alors, uh, to international goodwill and understanding. <laughs> This is a bit of luck. Huh? I'm sorry, monsieur. My name is Duvaux. Maurice Duvaux. Really? How old? You look exactly like André Marchand. Do you know him? No, I'm afraid I do not. Oh, I'm sorry, old chap. <laughs> Case mistaken, I did. All oh, that's all rot, you know. Tata. Tata. Strange. Mm -hmm. I've never seen him before. I'm quite certain. <laughs> Well, he's quite recognizable. You couldn't forget that. Hey. Are you all right? Uh, yes, I'm quite all right. If Mademoiselle is not feeling well, perhaps... No, I, I'm quite all right. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Oh, you get a doctor, please, quickly. Oh, certainly. Don't worry. Very well. No, no, we'll get it. Come on. Because the lady is... Here, this way.
is she? The doctor is still with her. <laughs> what a pity. What could have happened to her? You tell me. Poisoning. Good thing we got to you as soon as we did. You might have been a very sick young lady. Doctor, would you ask Mr. Baines to come in? All right. I assure you, it is of the utmost importance. She'll be all right. Nothing a few hours sleep won't cure. You know, she has a marvelous constitution. Oh, fortunate. Thank you for your help, Doctor. That's all right. She wants to see you. Oh? What compartment did you say you were in? Oh, um, uh, F. <laughs> I'll see you in a little while. A tout à l'heure. If she needs me, why, just call. My wife and I are in the next car forward. Ah, well, hello there. Hello there. How do you feel? Uh, I'm not sure yet. The doctor said some kind of poisoning. Must have been the wine. Too bad. It was a good year. But why me and not you? You tell me. Tell you what? Whatever comes into your pretty little head. Water. Water. That's what comes into my pretty little head. Well, that's it. That's it. I shall return. to New York. Is it pretty in Dayton? Pretty enough. And did you sell newspapers at the street corner to work your way through school? That is the American success formula, isn't it? I sold soda pop in front of my father's house and drank up all the profits. That's not the success formula. Were you in the army during the war? I was in the Navy. Communications officer on a carrier in the Pacific. Oh. Uh, it strikes me, Miss District Attorney, that you're asking an awful lot of questions for such a sick little girl. Oh, I'm sorry, it's I... my turn now. You ready for it? Yes. Who tried to poison you? Are you serious? Of course I'm serious. Oh, the thought never occurred to me. Who would want to poison me? You know what I think? What? You Americans read too many thrillers. <laughs> Tom. What? Must we talk about it now? Mm, I suppose I could wait till morning. I have located an empty compartment for you, Monsieur Baines. Thanks a lot. Two cars to the rear. Compartment G. Some of us are just lucky. Give me that. Must you? Shall I be? Tell me once again, please. How did you happen to discover him? Well, as I told you before, Inspector, he invited me to his compartment to have a drink of brandy. We'd met at dinner. When I got there, I found him on the floor, so I immediately called the conductor. Ah, it is true, Inspector. I had been with Monsieur Baines only moments before. I was showing him to his compartment. I warn you, Monsieur Baines. 
when Monsieur Duvaux recovers, we will be able to learn the truth. Oh, then he will recover? Well, I have a message from the hospital. Monsieur Duvaux is still unconscious and in critical condition, but the doctors assure me that he will recover. I'm sure we're all very relieved to hear so. Madame, voici votre passeport. Thank you. Monsieur. Thank you. The next. That'll be all. Thank you. Next, please. Look at this price. No, thank you. I beg your pardon. Might I borrow a match? Certainly. <laughs> the usual smoker's dilemma, you know. Always running out of matches. <laughs> Keep them, I have one. Thanks awfully. Good show. I say, have they got you yet? Yes, you? No. We may be here for hours. Right so. I know you do. So we were in the dining car last night and made a mental note to inquire who the attractive couple were. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Thomas Baines, and this is Miss Parkinson. I'm Burton Wilkins, a naval commander, retired. Delighted. How do you do? Pleasure, commander. Ah, a fellow Briton. <laughs> Doubly delighted. Son never says to know. <laughs> uh, pardon. Uh, you, monsieur, if you please. Me? Yes, monsieur. Oh, dear. Whiskey luck, was you? An awful coward. I say, this soup's delicious. Delicious? Oh, by the way, it reminds me. Have you seen the story about Conrad Reicher? Reicher? Yes, the German scientist chap. I'll have to plead ignorance. I never heard of him. <laughs> Just like a woman. <laughs> they never read anything in the papers except the fashion alerts. Conrad Reicher, my dear lady, is the German scientist who was kidnapped after the war and who did more to put Sputnik into space than any other man. And now it appears that he's disappeared. According to the paper here, there's a rumor he's in Zurich seeking asylum on our side. Seems hard to believe. My dear chap, you've no idea of the scandal that goes on at this very moment. So he could be teeming with foreign spies trying to grab him for their own bailiwick. It would be just one mad scramble. Cloak and dagger stuff. <laughs> Terribly exciting. <laughs> it is, by George. I wish I were back in harness again. I'd love to have a go at this. You were with British intelligence? Yeah, oh, no, my dear chap, no. I, I was uh, with the Admiralty. <clears throat> but I always kept in touch with the boys at the Foreign Office, you know, and the tales, oh, oh, the tales they had to tell. <laughs> I say this is split bean, isn't it? Hmm, smashing. Smashing! Oh, I haven't heard such a steady stream of compulsive conversation since I was a child. <laughs> Where did he come from? British Secret Service, I imagine. I beg your pardon? I said British Secret Service. You really mean that? It's possible. Agent? <laughs> you must be joking. Anyway, how would you know a spy who saw one? You know, I've been wondering what's in this little face here. Do you mind? Yes, I do. Wow. It's an interesting little gadget. Oh. girl could file a lot of nails with a thing like this. Tell me about it, Miss Parkinson. I have the faintest idea how it got there. Are you and the commander in this thing together? I've never seen him before in my life. Just who are you, Miss Parkinson? Really, Tom. I ask you a question. Do you want to tell me or the authorities in Zurich? You know, I imagine if I were to search that little magic case of yours, I might find a gun and several other little goodies. Why don't you help us both out? Oh, you're going to listen to this stupid nonsense. What are you going to do, call a conductor? Tell him you're a foreign agent traveling in a neutral country? And that you tried to kill a man last night? I tried to kill a man? DeVoe was stabbed by just such a weapon. In the middle of the night? I was asleep, and you know it. Were you, Miss Parkinson? Yes, Mr. Gannon. William Charles Gannon. Not Thomas Baines. Born in Kansas City, Missouri. Not Dayton, Ohio. Served with the OSS during the war, not the Navy. United States Counter Espionage Agent, Section 6 CIA. Favorite foods, steak, french fries. However, likes garlic, Mexican food, and blondes. Hmm. Anything else you'd like to know? You do get around. We British are old hands at the game. So it seems. Well, I'll say this, this moment you're one up. Tell me more. 
I tell you nothing, except that you guess correctly. I am with the British intelligence. We want Conrad Riker. We intend to get him. By any means, feminine or otherwise, huh? Oh, yes. Well, you, uh, did a pretty good job on me. I rather thought it was the other way around. You know, I spotted you as a phony after we'd been on this train for five minutes. I may not be Her Majesty's devoted servant, but I'm no amateur. I can personally attest to that. <laughs> okay, the truce. We're both on the same side. Let's not fight. Ah, uh, you mean you'll give up on Riker? Certainly not. Ordinarily, I'd say let the best man win, but in this case... Uh... Very well. A better man or woman, as the case may be. Uh, that's not cricket, Mr. Gannon. Mr. Gannon? Well, what shall I call you? William Charles. Gannon. Ooh, sounds so harsh. I'll try it again. Gannon. That's better. Would you like to know what my real name is? Mm-hmm. Emily just doesn't seem to suit you. It's Hillary Wade. Do you like it? Honey, your man Shakespeare said it much better. A rose by any other name. Would smell as sweet. Mm. Oh, I like the name. Did you stab Devo? No, darling. Did you? Why did he try to poison you? I have no idea. You and Commander in this together? Oh, no. Do you know where Conrad Riker is? Yes, I did. Do you? I heard a rumor. Hmm? That the Americans have him located. Hmm? We're in this together, darling. Hell. I wish I could. Let's make a deal. Depends. No more shop talk. Mm -mm. We'll be in Zurich soon. Are you busy this afternoon? I am now. Reservation for Baines, Thomas Baines. And Miss Emily Parkinson. One moment, please. Yes, we do. Register, please. Room 212 for Miss Parkinson and 231 for the gentleman. Thank you. I say there! <laughs> this is a bit much. Here we are all staying at the same hotel like one big happy family, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Smashing. <laughs> Quite. Polly <laughs> vous Oui, monsieur. Hello? You still unpacking? If a lady has a new Paris dress, she has to wear it, doesn't she? By all means. How about bringing it down to the bar for a drink? Later. Shopping first. Shopping? In Paris, a lady buys dresses. In Switzerland, she buys shoes. No matter where a lady goes, she buys something. Meet me at the bar at 6 o'clock, okay? Okay, O.B. Mm -hmm. Darling, speak English when you talk to me. Looking for someone, Commander? You know, I think it's about time you and I had a long talk. Come around, I'll buy you a beaker. Something 
something's gone wrong. The stabbing of the Frenchman on the train. It was broadcast on the five o'clock news. I had no choice. He recognized me. We were on the same assignment together five years ago. Oh, on opposite sides. Well, he was trying to tell Gannon. The announcer said the Frenchman will recover. Do you realize what will happen to you when he's able to talk? There was no choice. Foreign Office has sent another agent. Who? He calls himself Commander Burton Wilkins. That is his name. He is exactly what he appears to be, a relic of colonialism. Checked him thoroughly. As far as the English are concerned, you are working with him. But Gannon said... The American told you, and you believed him. <sighs> I've always argued that women are unreliable in this line of work, but the party assigned you to this over my protest. Have you located Reich? No. How do you know that he's not meeting with Gannon at this very moment? I have to contact him. Here I am. You were given one problem, one purpose. was to find Reich. The American has that information, and you will get it. You understand? I'll get it. Are you sure he's going to tell you? Absolutely. Very well. I'm instructed to inform you that the sum of 5,000 British pounds will be deposited in the Schweizer Bank fine in the morning in your name if you succeed. I if always you fail, it will go hard for you. One more thing. That American, after you have obtained the information from him, kill him. Put the money in the bank. <laughs> no, no, my dear, you're quite wrong. It was at the Battle of Jutland, and I wasn't nervous because I, I just received my first ship as a snotty, uh, a million. And frankly, I, I was scared stiff. <laughs> Hello, Commander. Well, well, I say, this is a surprise, Miss Parkinson. Was Mr. Baines here? Uh, he was. We had a drink together, and he vanished. Uh, I have the slightest idea where. Would you care to have a drink? Thank you, huh? Well, we'll sit at the table over here. What would you like? Uh, gin and tonic, please. Wait, uh, gin and tonic for one, please. I say, you know, these Americans are, are practically undefendable. Uh, oh, what is that? Uh, the Americans. Strange birds. <laughs> oh, it's just that I was supposed to meet Mr. Baines at six o'clock, and it's ten past now. Well, it only goes to show you how frightfully odd they can be. I say, do you know what he said to me this afternoon? No, what? Ask me if I was a spy. <laughs> Really? Yes. Like that, point blank. See here, Commander. He said, are you with the British Secret Service? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> it is too amusing for words. <laughs> yes, isn't it? <laughs> uh, well, I thought it was amusing. Uh, hello there. You're very late. Yes, well, I'm sorry, but a race was too long as expected. What's everybody drinking? Arrangements. Oh, for tomorrow morning, I'm going mountain climbing. Ah, there's a man of ambition. Want to come along? Really? I love mountain climbing. You've got a date. I say, I've got a jolly good idea. How about the three of us having dinner together? Well, Commander, I uh, have to dine rather early because I must get up at six in the morning. Oh. And besides, I'd like to talk over the trip with Miss Parkinson. Hmm. Oh, well. Perhaps you're right. So I'll, I'll just talk off. Oh, no, please don't go, Commander. Now, if the Commander has another appointment, we shouldn't keep him. Oh, well, perhaps you're right. I say, you know, if I, I were 20 years younger, I'd give this chap a run for his money. Bye-bye. You should be ashamed of yourself. You are terribly rude. No, oh, he's going to be a bore. Well, apparently he wasn't a bore this afternoon. Well, now, what's that supposed to mean? You asked me about being a British agent. Well, so I did. And you were wrong. Well, this is the first time. Look. Our job's difficult enough without you and I fighting. Make up. Okay. Make up. I'm glad about you and the commander. How's that? You're 20 years younger. He's not going mountain climbing. He's checking out of the hotel in the morning. That means he's meeting Riker tonight. Well, we've got to find out where. I have men available. We will follow him. No. I have an easier way. Oh, I seem to have run out of toothpaste. Well, come right in. I'm very large with toothpaste. Thank you.
I'm glad you weren't looking for a cup of sugar. I'll be just a second. Ah, here we are. The giant economy size. Contains a new miracle ingredient, soap. Heavy. Must hold a lot of ink. Mm-hmm. What's on your mind, Hillary? Oral hygiene. Now, ah, come on. What's on your mind? Dinner. Mm, no thanks, but no thanks. I have to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Mountain climbing, remember? Look, I don't like being lied to. You haven't planned any mountain climbing expedition or checking out in the morning. <laughs> Nosy little thing, aren't you? Just precautious. The most important space expert in the world is right here in Zurich. And you know where he is. Do I? Yes. When you meet him, I'm going to be there. Well, suppose Mr. Conrad Rocker chooses to go to the United States. That's a risk I'll take. All right. I'm meeting Conrad Riker at the Zurich airport, 6 o'clock in the morning. How do I know you're telling the truth? You don't. Well, even if you're lying. You're a charming liar. <laughs> <laughs> Just the same, I think you'd better take me to dinner. No, nah, you are persistent. And hungry. Well, we have to get up the crack of dawn. I'll pick you up in your room in 15 minutes. Oh, make it half an hour. Takes a lady time to, um, do a hair. <laughs> I can well imagine. <laughs> Home by 9 o'clock, Miss Wade, and I really mean it. But of course. I promise you'll be in bed early. Oh, and, uh, bring along your ice pick. I adored Icarus. Ten o'clock tonight, the Alton Spiegel Inn. That's a cafe of sorts. I'll be there, alone. Yes, that's all I need. Thank you, Doctor. Good night. <laughs> Hans, go to the chemist two blocks from the hotel and pick up a package in my name. And be quick about it. All right, Let's all see. right. Come into my parlor and zip me up. Mm. All of a sudden, I'm not hungry anymore. Attend to your chores, Mr. Gannon. Zip. On the bed. I need to know where Conrad Riker is. The British play rough. Save us both a lot of time and effort, Gannon. Why? Once more. Once more. No, 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 no. On the train, you said you were no amateur at this business. And neither am I. Mm. You convinced me. Scapalamine. Truth serum. Yes. Must we go on with this? No, it's not. You know, you're causing yourself a lot of unnecessary difficulties. I'm very good with a syringe. Now, if you'll just lie still, I'll mm. absolutely please. Mm. Mm. You know, mm. Hans. Dirty. Ooh. Ooh. There. Now, let's start working in a few seconds. Would you mind 
Counting back from 100 feet? No. 99. I will not do that. 98. I will not. 98. I will do it. 98. That's better. 97. 97. And the next? 96. And? 95, 94, 62. Where is Conrad Riker? I don't know. Answer me. Oh. Where are you meeting Conrad Riker? I don't know. Alton Spiegel in a cafe of sorts. When? I wouldn't tell. Ten o'clock. Tonight? Mm, tonight. That was painless, wasn't it? Get the others. I'll meet you later. This isn't scapalamine, Gannon. I have to do it. But you'd do the same if you were in my position, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Oh, I hate you. I hate you. Look, oh, Commander, exactly what sort of game are you playing? Follow the leader? Uh, I'm slumming. The driver told me that this is the most disreputable place in town, so uh, of course I, I couldn't resist it. I'm sure you have a better explanation than that. Uh, where is your friend, uh, Mr. Baines? He wasn't feeling very well, so he stayed in the hotel. Oh, good. Then I can act as your escort, if I may. I would prefer to be alone. I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. He's apparently very much better. Look here, I, I know you have an appointment, Miss Chap, so if you don't mind, I'd rather oh, not... Oh, stop be... this stupid nonsense. You mean you don't mind my staying here? Oh, hello there, Commander. Miss Wade. Gannon. So he is in this thing with you, hmm? In the... What on earth you... Oh, Commander, don't you think you should toddle off? Mr. Gannon and I have business to discuss. Well, upon my word. I think you're both very rude. Bring another glass. Ah, uh, scopolamine, 61. Must be your year. <laughs> well, the cards are on the table. Who's dealing? He is. My name is Thomas Baines. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. Mr. Baines, 
Yes. Thank you for coming. Shall we sit down and talk? <laughs> Bring another glass. Miss Wade, may I present Mr. Conrad Racker? Miss Wade? How do you do? I'm with the British government. Sit down, Mr. Racker. Thank you. I uh, know you must be anxious to get to the business at hand. There's a charter jet ready to leave for New York immediately. Would you like to visit the United States? There's a plane waiting to depart for London. The British government would consider it an honor. Thank you. I like London. I am very flattered you both to want me. Too many Europeans to the United States is still the new world. A challenge and a dream. Even to an old man, it can be very exciting to be a part of that dream. I have definitely decided to go to America. <sighs> Hans! Don't touch him. Somebody stole my money and you're the one? <laughs> we must leave that one. No, 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 wait. Those are your names? That's right. Britain loses. You win. Congratulations. But not Britain. Mr. Riker, it's just as well you decided to take that jet to New York. Miss Wade's plane wasn't really heading for London. You see, she's what's known our business as a double agent. She'll work for whoever will put up the most money. And this time it wasn't Britain. I'm sorry we won't be seeing very much of each other. I rarely ever get to Siberia. I have a feeling your traveling days are over, Gallon. You're going to get your wish. To sleep in the same bed for seven consecutive nights. And for an eternity. I do hope you'll send me flowers. Come, Mr. Ragger. Our car is waiting. Hey, hey, the damage! Who, who's going to... Well, Commander Burton welcomes Mr. Conrad Ragger. Pleasure, sir. Thank you. You decided to see America first. I'm sorry you didn't choose England, sir. But as they say in the States, that's the brakes. Come, we'd better be off. Well... Welcome, Miss Wayne. Hello, Ray. I'd like to have you meet Commander Burton Wilkins, British Intelligence. But they said that... I wasn't an agent. <laughs> I wasn't until 48 hours ago, when the Foreign Office wanted somebody completely unknown to your people. A new face. You see, Miss Wayne, they've been on to you for some time. Those tablets. Poison. Poison? No poison. Pure sugar, my dear. Oh. And incidentally, next time you tie a man up, please don't make the knots quite so tight. Terribly tough on the nails. You and Gannon planned it. Togetherness. Shall we, Commander? Yes. Then nothing about this was real. Very real. The Frenchman Deveau regained consciousness this afternoon, Delory. He named you. The Swiss wants you for attempted murder. I see. In a way, I'm sorry. All of this assignment wasn't work. No. Not for me either. I don't suppose either of you gentlemen climb mountains. No. 
I don't suppose. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us. Look forward to seeing you again.